The rich Tuyama clan found Charles and his force of conscripts and volunteers to be more than their match. The battles Charles won helped keep Japanese troops away from the current strategic objective of Kyoto. Reports of fighting on Shikoku revealed where Jervis had disappeared off to. He defeated an enemy army and set up shop in a castle, eager for more action. Kyoto fell, and with it being the home of the Emperor, the Japanese focused on taking it back, even though the Emperor was outspokenly pro-British, seeing the way the tide was going. Come in. Don't mind if I do. Oh, sorry, I was looking for Master Alcock. That is I, and it is Mr. Alcock, if you please. What can I do for you? You're Charles from the army? Yes, what of it? Oh my. They told me you were just a spring chicken, but by the looks of you, you've seen more winners than me. I'm 17 years old, if that's what you're trying to ask. Are you from Obama? Well, I'll be. No, darling, I'm from, well, the Netherlands, I suppose. You think that because I am young that I don't recognize your accent, madam? I'm exceptionally well-traveled, you see. <laughs> anyway, where are my manners? My name is Cal, Cal Westerman, and it is a most delightful pleasure to make your acquaintance, darling. The same, of course, but please, I must ask you two things. Firstly, I am busy, so state your purpose quickly. And secondly, we consider it quite rude to be so familiar with someone you've just met. I know we've just met, but if I'm to be your bride, it makes sense What? Oh my, don't tell me you don't know. No! What is this? Better talk to your daddy about this. Oh my stars, this is turning out to be quite the adventure. Welcome to Honourable Gentlemen episode 15. Right now we're pursuing our objective of capturing all the territory up to this river that leads up to Kyoto since we can then defend the bridges easily and assess what we should do next. George Hook gets an easy capture near the river mouth or to resolving that garrison away. And also helping us out is the volunteer army under Sukitsuna Lawrence, who is now moving down to attack Yamashiro there. Just an annoying little castle in the background that's very inaccessible, but we'll need to take it just in case the enemy secretly recruit units there later on. We'll have to walk through attrition to get there, but shouldn't be too much of an issue. Now at Kyoto itself, the enemy have prepared for a siege, but they're not actually besieging it. They've just got two armies standing here, and both of them have a lot of melee units. The first one is almost exclusively melee, the second one has lots of traditional units. So overall, this is a case where we want to attack them rather than letting them attack us, because a field battle will probably be easier than a castle defence, since in a castle defence we might not really see the enemy until they're at point blank range. So here we'll have all the space we need to work with, hopefully. We get both of our armies combined together, and so do they, and here we go it is. Just an open field battle with no remarkable terrain involved. Our line can extend far enough to actually get some outflanking action on both ends of the line, because the enemy are in double slash triple line formation, their numbers aren't really helping. Our riflemen, as the fight starts, just start sniping away at the corner of their formation. You can see on the minimap our two lines aren't properly facing each other, so one edge of the enemy army gets shot at while the rest is in safety, and I guess this causes the AI to just ignore the small amount of danger they're facing because most of the army is okay. So a couple of units start engaging us over here. Our outflanking echelon easily takes down these levies, and our snipers took down some of their samurai. But after a while, the enemy seemed to realize that this pattern could continue until they lost their whole, the whole army, so they began moving towards us. However, as you can see, they're moving at a walking pace. They have absolutely no desire at all to get this fight going, which is what they need with their melee-focused build. So now... This fight is rapidly turning into a slaughter as we just stand here, the enemy march into range and then get gunned down. We're going to be removing plenty of high value melee units without anything of a fight. Some of them may eventually breach our line but overall this is just going to be target practice for the troops. There you are. Thought you'd gone and drowned yourself with that new vice. You should try it, General. 
Sake, the natives call it. A most unique yet irresistible taste. Don't tell me I was right. No, no. Think less low of me, please. I was stalled by a supposedly urgent telegram. It's actually for you, so I thought I'd bring it over. Let's be having it then. <laughs> oh, the little hobbity hoy is struggling with love. Did you meet Miss Westerman? Incredibly, no. Can scarcely find another like me, it seems. You set the jackal on poor Charles, did you? Yes, chained him to her, rather. A little arrangement with a marshal on the royal side. He'll be privy to a higher sort of life, if he can stick things out with her. Seems like he'd rather not, given that missive. I've been reliably informed that everyone learns to love her in time. A southern belle, that's what they call her. She's twice his age, is she not? Just what the boy needs. Accelerates one's development to be with an older woman. Is that so? I shall have to remember that for my next ward. Anyway, I see the shooting started. Oh, don't mind that. No trouble today. Might as well partake of this miracle drink if you've got some. The battle went much better than expected. I just couldn't really be bothered with this one. The only really hairy moment was here when an almost full unit of swordsmen nearly made contact with our line, but by running away I was able to bring other guns to bear on these guys, and at about this point they were routing because their army has gone anyway, just in time to get shot as they try to leave. So that'll be the end of that. An absolute massacre. Over 4,000 enemy troops were killed, and you can see the battle fields just covered in their bodies, whereas our lines barely had anything done to them. Ten times fewer casualties on our side. So with that one, I think we've quite clearly staked our claim to Kyoto now, but that said, that is only the beginning of the resistance to our occupation of this area. The Japanese have lots of armies around here, especially the Wakayama who are waiting just over the river as we can see. There's also the Teratsuki, you can see they've got an army there and a territory nearby that we need to take to secure our position on this side of the river. Right now I'm going to send John Alcock to try and stand next to that little bridge there so we can block the Wakayama from attacking, and if they do attack then it'll be a river defence, which we haven't seen yet in this series I don't think, so that's something new. What actually happens is the Tadasuki army marches in the other direction and attacks a relatively ungarrisoned castle. So now a little bit of trouble for the men here. The enemy army's got loads of ninjas of different varieties there, so a very stealthy force. And they're going to be a problem for us, obviously, because once they get inside the castle, we're going to be at a severe melee disadvantage. It's only the first level of castle, so all we can do is just stand in here and see what happens. The enemy's melee troops outclass even ours. We do have Spear Levy, but Spear Levy actually have very low melee stats, even lower than most regular line infantry units in my experience, so they're not going to help very much. What we really need to do is this, gun down the enemy while they're distracted. So here I'm using these levies out in front of the line to just fight with the ninjas and hope that this draws all of the enemy's attention so we can shoot them in the flank. But it failed, and that's all you can really say about that. You can see enemy units have come to attack my gunners, including a nearly full strength unit of these Tetsubo ninjas who we've seen before are just absolutely devastating. We're going to lose all of our men there very, very rapidly. So here we are, 30 seconds later, nothing's looking good. All of our units are disappearing, and now I just had a couple of units at the other side, on the other side of the cars, if I'd pulled away from the fight to prolong things, even though the enemy are taking the capture point now. Nothing we can do. Thought maybe I'd get more kills by forcing the enemy to run at us again. It kind of works, we do get a bit of a volley onto those ninjas there, but overall, no big deal. All the troops who are left behind are now going to be killed, there goes the last of the Sepoys, and with that, we can no longer contest the capture point in any way. The enemy started throwing grenades into the last remaining melee, and that was okay as far as I was concerned, since they're probably killing a load of their own troops. It's the regular sword ninjas that throw those grenades. These are from vanilla, I believe. All the other ones are modded units who can't do this. So yes, we just let them continue firing. Not that we have any 
both but to do that obviously, and hoped that it killed many enemy troops. Eventually they took the capture point and that's a close defeat, so the castle is lost. We did do some damage to the enemy but nothing significant and they'll get to replenish this turn as well. That was the end of that, they didn't move on to attack my nearby troops which was quite handy. There was one other battle which was Charles fighting some of the Tuyama who came over to attack his castle. I just auto resolved it, lost a unit annoyingly but overall that went fine and with an army that's full of conscripts who are easy to replenish, taking a few losses here and there isn't so important. Now I wanted to take revenge by coming to take this castle right back, but all I had available was three sets of howitzers and four units of military police. We do have this army somewhat nearby that's been waiting around to punish my vassal if they betray me because they were threatening to do so. So I'm going to start bringing them over. I could probably win that siege assault if I actually manually resolved it. It was being a bit mean and not giving the howitzers much presence on the balance bar, but in this case I wasn't that worried about the castle so I wasn't going to commit the time to actually retake it. I just left things as a siege to see what would happen. Lawrence completes his march into the mountains to take Yamashiro from just a garrison and an officer, no problems there. With that done there's only one thing left to do to complete our little front line plan and that is to have George Hook go to the north and attack that weirdly named place that looks a little bit like Kyoto and Tokyo. And in this case there's no issue to take it since we can just go with a full stack against their garrison. There was just some delay since I had to pull the agents after the army since they always get left behind in the castles annoyingly when you garrison men into a castle. There we go, got the capture and with George in the vicinity of the front line now I'm going to move Dorian away to support with this Tadasuki situation. He can start moving towards their army, pushing one of their smaller groups away, even hiding him there just in case we can get a cheeky ambush. So that's everything set up in this area. Now we're going to jump over to take a quick look at what Joss is up to. He's obviously done on Tanegashima, but now he's got another island project to look into. It's Goto Island, and similar to Tanegashima, we've got three castles to take. There are three and a half stacks of troops there, and we're just going to move in with our one stack and see if we can't take them all down. I'm going to do the classic trick of having one ship destroy the ports so that there's no zone of control there. That will allow us to land nearby. You can order your ships to land in the port but it never works in my experience. I think there's probably some other way of doing it. It works in vanilla Shogun too sometimes but whatever. So once that was set up we move on to the next turn and the Yamanuchi who go first have a battle for us. They come to attack Jervis over on Shikoku. Perhaps a deadly move for themselves because now they're going to face his pretty elite force with the castle advantage and their army doesn't look especially suited to taking him down so time for a bit more slaughter. Boom! <laughs> that ought to get them running a little faster! Welcome to Japan, you little cheese weasels! Sir, sir, that's not... Our reinforcements are coming from the south. What? Who are those red folk out there, then? Those would be the Japanese, sir. There is a slight difference in appearance, if you inspect them. Oh, fiery fiddlesticks with a poked-out eye! It's times like this makes me wish I'd kept my old eyeglasses. You lost them, sir? They were taken from me! Did you report it, sir? No use. Division's having none of it. They say that they can't court-martial a bear. Oh, is that so? Well, I didn't know that, sir. It's okay. I've forgiven him in many ways. He was such a good friend, I just can't bring myself to think that it was for any reason other than my own good. I see, sir. I know what will cheer you up. I'll take care of the battle. Why don't you go and watch the Scots fight the Japs in the courtyard? It will take your mind off things. Yes, yes, I think I will. Thank you, Captain. Oh, there are so many good spirits in this world. I am so blessed! The first part of the battle went as usual, just sitting around in the castle shooting everyone and taking some damage to enemy melee attacks. They did have some ninjas who got in and started wreaking havoc, but otherwise things have gone fine. Outside the castle I ended up getting Jervis and all of the Lancers to go out for some exercise to take out some of the last enemy units that were coming in to fight. Here's some levies trying to fight with our king zone, realizing immediately it's not going to happen and running away. And they're going to be soon running into Jervis because we 
break through the first unit we fought, and then move immediately on to hit this big blob in the background. They had all these guys queued up to go up through the gatehouse into the castle, and now we can just engage all of them at the same time, since all those units are standing on top of each other causing a big, blobby fight where the enemy are sort of trapped, their morale is low, and overall we're going to be slaughtering them quite well. Our reinforcements, some colonial infantry came in, defeating a couple of cavalry units, as well as the enemy's general along the way, and have now finally joined the actual fight, shooting down some levies there, and there go all of the guys in that blob. They rout, and the slaughter will really get started as the cav chase them down. So here's the eventual result. We did lose two units to the melee attacks that I mentioned, but overall it was okay, and we can just re-recruit those guys in this province, which is actually faster than waiting for a damaged unit to replenish, so it's not all bad. The Takasuki tried to become my vassal, and after some negotiation I agreed, as long as I got some money out of it. I was a bit hesitant to do it because I was pretty certain they would just betray me at some point, but for now we'll have peace with them and just take their money and focus on the front line in that area. Now a little bit of naval action. Three corvettes came to attack a gunboat that was sitting in one of my ports. I think because the port is destroyed they can attack here rather than just being made to do a blockade. While it doesn't look like a very good battle, looks like we'd just lose, I wanted to fight this one anyway because when you do a battle just outside a port you get these guys, the coastal guns, which are actually very powerful in my prior experience. They outrange regular naval guns and they do more damage to hulls. So all we need to do is sit right at the back of the map and force the enemy to sail towards us, being hit by the coastal guns all the way. And as it happens, the first boat coming in, after a couple of volleys, gets hit by a critical and is destroyed before it can even open fire on us, so that went surprisingly well. You can see from the shape of the map that the enemy ships have to come into the arcs of fire off the coastal guns to get anywhere near me, so we're definitely going to be getting some good damage here. The second ship comes in and appears to actually start firing at the coastal guns. They do have crew who can be killed, so I think it's possible to disable them by attacking them like that. However, in this case, the enemy were not successful because we get another critical and destroy it before they did any damage to us. Their final ship was possibly crewed by the Dark Artillery Lord. It started just firing at the land here. I think it wants to hit our guns, but there's no line of sight programming in naval battles because usually there aren't big things blocking line of sight, so I guess they decided it wasn't that important. But eventually that ship comes into range of our guns and also gets hit by a crit. So I'm guessing these coastal guns have a much higher chance to inflict critical hits than uh, regular naval guns since it seemed to happen so regularly there. There we have it, heroic victory. We didn't even get touched with our one little gunboat in the corner and the enemy just got wiped out. So that was a very efficient trade indeed. Now the Toyama come to attack a group standing next to Charles. This group was supposed to be setting up an ambush just for no reason, but it's just a regular battle. In this case, I choose to retreat and not fight it, mainly because I would have to bring in my artillery as reinforcements, and that would stop them from firing at the start of the battle since they were moving around and setting up, and they would lose valuable killing time. So I just left that scenario so we can start a fight on our own terms at some point. Now over in Kyushu, we've got reports that the Harado are planning to betray us, and that seems to be corroborated by their behaviour. They've been doing agent actions against one of my castles, and both of their armies are standing there ominously. So I think they do plan to attack us. It's going to be up to Tananao to deal with this. He is currently in charge of all of Kyushu, so I've had him sailing up since I predicted this might happen. And now he can land and start gradually moving forces over to help. If the Harado just attacked us right now, we wouldn't be able to stop them, but hopefully they'll delay enough for us to prepare for this betrayal. Dearest family, it is with regret that I write to say that I shall not be returning to you, as I had previously thought. Given my experience with the Japanese, I have been made into a sort of military governor, a role that requires my complete attention. I long to see those rolling fields and boisterous elders of which my father used to speak. Yet at the same time I would be foolish to leave this land behind so quickly. Indeed it is now that I wish I could trade my time at the pot for time practicing pencil work, so that I might portray to you the majesty of these brooks and mountains that I travel. 
there is drama aplenty at every angle, and when you press on to seek it out you find yet more, recursively compounding its effect on your soul until, alas, you want for nothing else. It is my wish that one day every box of Kyushu Blend will come with a postcard of sorts in order to spread the word of the beauty in which the leaves are bathed as they ripen. As Joss was left alone by the local Fukui clan, we have the choice of which direction to go first. In this case, you might think I should march and attack the castle on the left, because then we could only be attacked in the future from one direction, but I'm actually going right just because it allows a siege drawout to be done, since this smaller army is near the castle, we can deplete the castle's garrison with this field battle, and hopefully end up getting an easier first capture so we're not really damaged and left in a dangerous position. Because we have some captured parrot guns in the army, we'll get the thing where the first enemy group attacks on its own to make it nice and easy to kill. They're just going to run right at our line and we'll shoot them. I'm experimenting with using meal fire. I did stop using it once I realized that multiple ranks can fire normally, but for some reason using meal fire makes it feel like your men shoot more. Maybe it uh, reduces the weight between reload cycles or something. Not quite sure there. Anyway, there's their main army coming on at the back, and we're going to hit it with some naval support fire. The problem here, though, is that because Joss is really good at using naval support fire, the radius it hits in is really small. So in this case, we don't really hit very much because we hit such a small area. If it had hit more inaccurately, it probably would have hit more enemies. Anyway, we'll have to use the wide area of effect mode, which you can do for naval fire. It's usually useless, but perhaps for Joss needed to hit big targets. Now the first attacking group is quite easily defeated, as you might imagine, they're outnumbered and outgunned, so we just kill them and then stand there some more, waiting for the enemy to arrive. There was a delay, because their army wanted to form up into various kinds of lines before attacking and spent ages adjusting its formation, so we hit it with more naval support fire and parrot gun fire while they did that. Then once they did advance, we just shot the rest of them, and already their morale was low, so it was quite easy to rout these Victory units away assured, once we'd killed sir. a few of them. It wasn't the complete shoot them down to the last man affair that we sometimes get. And all I really did as a player was advance up with Dragoons on the right and Revolver Mercenaries on the left, just in time to not really have any impact on the battle. They can shoot some of the escaping troops. We certainly took some damage to the shots that the enemy very rudely shot back at us, but overall a nice easy fight where you don't really have to look at the screen and eventually you'll just win, which is exactly the sort of fight that I like these days. So there we go, off they go, decisive victory. With that done, the garrison inside the castle is now severely depleted and we're still in good condition so we can move on as planned, another one of those 10 to 1 ratio battles. There's another advantage by the way to having done that battle first rather than going to the left and attacking that castle over there, and that is that the port nearby is controlled by this castle, so taking this one makes the port guns stop shooting at our fleet, and then we can dock the fleet and get the agents that are on board off it because they don't land with you when the army lands in another annoying twist. So there we go, now they can join up with our force, and we'll just sit around, replenish and see how the enemy react to all that. Jumping now over to Jervis, we need to slightly refit his army using some of the units I recruited newly to make something a bit more powerful looking. We don't want any nearly dead units in the army since if we have to auto resolve anything it will just delete them. So we'll move out without a full force, 19 units all do us, and lay siege to the next castle. It has a really big garrison so we can't just bust on in like I thought we might be able to. So we'll just have to wait. There is a risk here that the survivors of the previous battle will now just move east and take the castle we've left behind. However, I'm just going to ignore that risk and play things fast and loose in a truly Jervis style. And as it happens, they don't go for it. It looked like for a second they might go for it there, but actually they just wanted to destroy my port. That's fine for now. Now there's a little bit of enemy movement over on Goto Island, but no attack for Joss, so that's handy, he can replenish now. The Hirado don't betray us this turn, so that was good of them, gives us more time to prepare, we're still going to consider them a threat since they're standing there ominously. And finally the Kanazawa bring an army up to attack Charles, and there happens to be a Toyama army standing immediately behind them now, which will join the fight, so it's two stacks attacking the castle and our gates are open, so not a completely ideal siege defence scenario. The balance bar's still pretty even 
even, despite the fact they have us massively outnumbered. Probably because our men are so elite. These are some good conscripts. Anyway, so we'll get into that meaty defense next time. That is all for this week, thank you very much for watching and very special thanks to all of the officially Devon patrons. A second anti-Jervis army will form, perhaps with better prospects, and will root out a fair few traitors in the next episode of Honourable Gentlemen.